just goes to show that this is a once in a lifetime uh, fight. Should you be jailed for simply sharing information publicly that exposes the crimes of someone else? The obvious answer to that is no. But that is literally what is being debated in the case of Julian Assange, threatening press freedom because of it. And there is now an update to that case that you need to be aware of. So in this video, I will discuss what Julian Assange did, what the update to this case is, and even why the Obama administration defended Assange before Trump took over and went after him. So of course, to start, you may have heard of Julian Assange before this video. He, of course, is the founder of WikiLeaks, and immediately that name brings up a red flag for some people because of what happened in 2016, where WikiLeaks clearly aided the Trump campaign by publishing information that hurt Hillary Clinton and only hurt Hillary Clinton. Now, I think ultimately, WikiLeaks took a gamble there, thinking that if they helped Trump, that they would help to release Julian Assange, and that gamble did not pay off. But in their defense, regardless of who won, I think the situation with Assange would still be the same. Now, WikiLeaks, of course, is known for, is apart from you know the campaign in 2016, is known for exposing U.S. war crimes. And that's what this case ultimately is about. So from In These Times, the publications the U.S. is using to pursue Assange date back nearly a decade ago, well, now a decade ago. In 2010, Army Intelligence Analyst Chelsea Manning realized she couldn't stay silent anymore. Stationed in Iraq, she became disturbed by the dehumanization of Iraqi life that is inherent in protracted military occupations. She also had access to a massive trove of documents that showed how, in Chelsea Manning's words, First world countries exploited third world countries through crazy, almost criminal political back dealings. Manning believed that if she could get this information to the U.S. public, she would reveal the true nature of 21st century asymmetric warfare. Her intent was clear, to expose the truth and spark a public debate. Manning tried to take her secrets to the Washington Post, the New York Times, and Politico, but they weren't interested. Manning turned to WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks first released a video of a July 12, 2007 airstrike filmed from an Apache helicopter gun site. The strike killed at least 12 people, including two Reuters reporters. Provocatively, WikiLeaks titled the video Collateral Murder, a clear commentary on the euphemism collateral damage, which U.S. officials used to describe civilian deaths. Soldiers fired on a van rescuing the wounded, injuring children in the process. One of the pilots responded, quote, while it's their fault for bringing their kids into a battle, Reuters had filed Freedom of Information Act requests about the incident, but never received the video. The Pentagon was reportedly taken by surprise at its release. And that's just one major example of what was released. Assange and WikiLeaks also went on to uh, expose even more about U.S. empire, including internal military logs from Iraq and Afghanistan, and also information about uh, Guantanamo Bay detainees. And now after Assange has been jailed for about 12 years, he's on the verge of being sent to the U.S. to face charges. So more here on that from the AP. The British government on Friday ordered the extradition of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to the U.S. to face spying charges, a milestone but not the end of a decade-long legal saga sparked by his website's publication of classified U.S. documents. WikiLeaks said it would challenge the order, and Assange's lawyers have 14 days to lodge an appeal. So here's a little more on this from his brother during an interview on Democracy Now! You know, this ruling just says, you know, the UK government uh, agrees that uh, a journalist, a publisher, can be uh, taken from the UK, can be extradited from the UK solely for doing their job. So this is a huge, uh, hugely dangerous precedent that's been set uh, in the UK for journalists and publishers there. So this is a, just goes to show that this is a once in a lifetime uh, fight, you know, and it's the publisher that has been punished in this situation. It's none of the criminals, none of the people who have committed these crimes that there is uh, much evidence for. Uh, it is the publisher in this situation that is that is receiving the punishment. Uh, the New York Times, De Spiegel, uh, Washington Post, The Guardian, they all published uh, similar information and none of them uh, are facing a, uh, a the punishment uh, that Julian is. We are going to fight this 
this ruling by Priti Patel. Uh, we have an opportunity to appeal, uh, uh, apply to appeal to the High Court in the UK and then to the European Court of Human Rights. So we're going to fight this, but uh, with this ruling, uh, it's, it's saying the UK government, uh, they want to move this forward. They want to extradite Julian to the USA. So shortly I'll get to why the Obama administration did not do this, did not decide to go after him, but in fact it was Trump that did, but more on that here from Common Dreams. If found guilty of all 17 Espionage Act charges, which were originally brought by the Trump administration, Assange could face a 175-year prison sentence, which the U.S. has said he could serve in his native Australia. A British judge had previously rejected U.S. attempts to secure Assange's extradition on the grounds that the country's prison system is so brutal that it would endanger the journalist's life. Now, U.S. President Joe Biden has been asked to drop the charges brought against Assange during Trump's presidency, arguing they pose, they pose a grave threat to free speech. Essentially here, as I'll get to with Obama, you have Biden continuing the Trump administration, their approach to press freedom, as opposed to doing what Obama did. So Biden being even more conservative than Barack Obama. Essentially, as I said, extending the Trump administration and their policies on press freedom. So you have here countless groups. This is from a year ago, but these groups still in support of Julian Assange. This is in the New York Times. Civil liberties groups ask Biden Justice Department to drop Julian Assange case. So you have the Freedom of Press Foundation organized the letter. Other signers, about two dozen groups, included the American Civil Liberties Union, Amnesty International USA, the Center for Constitutional Rights, the Committee to Protect Journalists, Demand Progress, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Human Rights Watch, the Knight First Amendment Institute at Columbia University, the Project on Government Oversight, and Reporters Without Borders. So all of these groups coming out to say, hey, regardless of how you feel about Julian Assange, things that he may have done personally in his life in the past, or even how they treated the 2016 election, what they're doing right now, this, this legal charge against him, threatens all press freedom. Now, this is where we get to why Obama did not go after him. So this piece from 2019, the Trump administration's indictment of Julian Assange threatens core press freedom rights. So uh, the following statement can be attributed to Freedom of the Press Foundation Executive Director Trevor Tim, who goes on to say here, for years, the Obama administration considered indicting WikiLeaks publisher Julian Assange before rightly concluding it could not do so without encroaching on core press freedoms. Now, almost nine years in, the Trump administration has used the same information to manufacture a flimsy and pretextual indictment involving a conspiracy to violate the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, based entirely on alleged conversations between a journalist and source. While the Trump administration has so far not attempted to explicitly declare the act of publishing illegal, a core part of its argument would criminalize many common journalist source interactions that reporters rely on all the time. Requesting more documents from a source, using an encrypted chat messenger, or trying to keep a source's identity anonymous are not crimes. They are vital to the journalistic process. Whether or not you like Assange, the charge against him is a serious press freedom threat that should be vigorously protested by all those who care about the First Amendment. And uh, Trevor Tim goes on here in a recent piece in Common Dreams to write more about why this case is so important. And also want to share here, Ryan Grimm on Twitter tweeted out, as we continue to drift toward authoritarianism, historians will see Biden's pursuit of Julian Assange as a major stain on his legacy and a contributor toward that authoritarian drift. And that is undeniable. Again, Biden here continuing what Trump did. So if you have a problem with Trump's approach to press freedom, and you should, you should also have a problem with how Biden is treating this issue as well, as he's treating it exactly the same. And just a last resource here. Again, I link to all my sources below the video uh, under sources on YouTube. This is from Amnesty International on how the U.S. pursuit of Julian Assange is a distraction from impunity for war crimes. So, you know, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, uh, Freedom for, uh, or the Freedom of the Press Foundation, all fantastic groups to uh, read more about this and why this case is so important. Again, regardless of how you feel about Assange or what they did in 2016, this case is incredibly important for press freedom and this story should be amplified.